Costa Rica is a spectacular Central American country bordered by Nicaragua to the north, Panama to the south, the Caribbean Sea to the east, and the Pacific Ocean to the west. With its close proximity to all that salt water, combined with ideal growing conditions as you move inland, this small country produces a lot of delicious food. The tropical fruit, especially bananas, pineapples, and papayas are the best I've ever tasted. And given that agriculture has always been a mainstay of the Costa Rican economy, these folks really know how to raise excellent beef, pork, poultry, and vegetables. All of this combined with the abundance of fresh seafood guarantees that you're going to eat well, very well, in Costa Rica. The first order of business upon our arrival in Costa Rica was to purchase a charcoal barbecue. I knew this was definitely going to be a place I wanted to do some grilling. And a real bonus was discovering the amazing charcoal they use, stuff you can't easily find here at home. This charcoal comes from Paraguay in South America and it's produced from an incredibly dense heavy wood called Cabracho Blanco. It takes a bit to let it, but once you get it going it produces fantastic hot coals that burn for two to three hours and they impart an amazing charcoal flavor to all of your grilled food. And believe me, the Costa Ricans know how to grill. Whether it's meat, poultry, fish, fruit or vegetables, you can bet that at some point it's going to wind up on a barbecue. On this episode of Danny Hooper Edibles, I'll be grilling a delicious carne asada, which is a Spanish term that translates into grilled meat. Sounds pretty basic, but typically it's made from the tougher cuts of beef like flank or skirt steak, and the meat is marinated in an endless variety of spices that add flavor, citrus fruits like orange or limes that tenderize the meat, and a wild range of liquids that can include anything from black coffee to soy sauce for a little added dimension. Regardless of the combination of marinade ingredients, once the meat hits the grill and absorbs that smoky flavor from that excellent charcoal, the outcome is always out of this world. But before we get grilling, let's take a quick look at this beautiful country. The coastal regions of Costa Rica tend to be dry and at times fairly windy. The beaches are amazing and it seems you're never far from great little beach towns and funky little surf communities where it's super easy to find delicious food and drink right on the waterfront. In fact, one of the best desserts I've ever tasted was the pineapple pie at a little beachfront restaurant in Cocoa Beach up on the northwest coast of the country. Moving inland, the vegetation and topography change dramatically. Temperatures are cooler than along the coast, and the landscape is blanketed with rainforests and punctuated with spectacular volcanoes, many of which supply the unbelievable natural hot springs you'll find in Costa Rica. Wherever you travel in Costa Rica, you'll notice an item on menus called casado. Now, a casado, which means marriage, is just that. It's what they refer to as a plato typico or typical dish, offering a variety of tastes piled up on one overflowing plate of bright colors and delicious flavors. Casados are always offered at local restaurants and generally have a good-sized portion of white rice, black beans, salad, and your choice of meat. Costa Rica doesn't have much of an international reputation for its cuisine because, for the most part, these folks eat simply. And when you're surrounded by such an abundance of fresh food, who needs to get fancy? That said, things are changing and you don't have to look far to find amazing, delicious food, whether it's a wide variety of multicultural samplings found at the night markets, or the mind-blowing presentations of all this fantastic bounty at local restaurants. And let's not forget the coffee. When I heard that Costa Rica only produces about 1% of the world's coffee, I thought to myself, that must be because they're keeping it all for themselves. And why wouldn't they? Costa Rican coffee is so delicious, especially when savored at one of the specialty coffee houses like the one we discovered in La Fortuna. These guys at Arabagos take their coffee breaks very seriously. And now let's get on with cooking that delicious carne asada I was talking about get started right now we're going to cook our carne asada the meat we've got the charcoal has been settling down here and it is perfect temperature need about another four minutes on the grill all right we're going to get to work right now and create a really nice a nice uh, kind of a pineapple onion tomato garlicky kind of a salsa uh, that we can put on top of the carne asada the beef once it comes off the grill off the paria we put it into those tortilla shells or those wraps and we'll top it with this nice salsa so here's what we're going to do i want to try these onions we're going to kind of clean it up a little bit got a nice hot fire
I've already cut up some uh, fresh garlic. Again, the garlic here is fabulous. I probably got about lots of garlic because I'm married to a Ukrainian and she loves lots of garlic and so do I because I love my Ukrainian wife. So anyway, we've got about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of uh, beautiful minced garlic in there, chopped garlic. Put in a little uh, drizzle of olive oil. Throw these tomatoes in there. Now, off the charcoal grill. Got some beautiful caramelized onion and pineapple. Oh man, that onion smells so sweet. Mm, mm, mm. So to finish these off, uh, and just let them marinate a little bit before we eat, I'm going to take some olive oil, just a little bit of olive oil on there, take some fresh chopped garlic, sprinkle that over the top, and then some coarse kosher sea salt. There you go. All right, we're back working on our salsa, going to finish that off right now, and we're going to give it a little bit of kick. Uh, these are some incredible peppers, take a look at that thing. Kind of looks like a half an arrow, although it's really hot. I'm going to use about half of it uh, for this amount of salsa. Don't want, to, don't want to overdo it. That's why jalapenos are a great choice anytime you're making a salsa. You know, they're not, they're not over the top hot. Now, I'm going to give this a tiny little squirt of tomato paste, tomato sauce. And now our secret ingredient, these ugly limes. I would never have thought, I've never seen them before, but these are called limon, they're lime, but they're called limon mandarina. I'm just cut one of these open for you here right now and you, look at that. Beautiful and super, super juicy. Watch this. Kosher, coarse salt, roasted pineapple, charred onion, charred pineapple as well, cilantro, lots of garlic, sea salt, and this kick-ass pepper, and that's the salsa, folks, that we're going to be putting on our carne asada. We'll just let that sit. All right, it is dinner time here on Danny Hooper Edibles, and we have our beautiful carne asada, this fabulous beef that's been marinated. Let's just carve this up and get ready to enjoy this. We'll serve this in tortillas. Take this, heat that up in a little pan, get it nice and warm, little tortilla shell. You put your carne asada, your meat in there, do a little bit of the salsa. Then what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take one of the grilled vegetables that we did, the zucchini, lay that right on top, and we're gonna give her one of these. Mm. Mm. O M G. A highlight of this trip to Costa Rica was making friends with some of the locals. And when the Segura family invited us into their home for a cooking lesson, we jumped at the opportunity. It was a lot of fun learning to make arroz con leche, a delicious Spanish rice pudding. And the tortillas de queso. That's homemade corn tortillas which the locals enjoy for breakfast, lunch, and at snack time stuffed with shredded cheese. Simple yet so delicious. The cuisine of Costa Rica is a reminder to keep it simple when cooking and to always source the freshest ingredients available. The food we tasted in Costa Rica has inspired me to up my game by marinating more of the meats that I love to grill and to invest in better quality charcoal. Believe me, it really makes a huge difference in the final outcome. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Danny Hooper Edibles. And if you did, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. There's plenty more to come. Hungry? Let's eat!